Swedish pancakes hot off the griddle in Nobre. The lingonberry butter starts oozing and dripping all over. Korean short ribs with a showstopper of a topping in San Francisco. It's dinner and a show. And a savory slow-cooked shawarma with all the fixins in Oakland. You get this explosion of flavor. You gotta try this. Check, Please, You Gotta Try This is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. It's believing race should never be a health risk and investing in research to make it so. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Total Wine and More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine and More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area's new spin-off, You Gotta Try This. We have three guests. Each one recommends one dish that they can't get enough of, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. Along the way, we take a deep dive into the stories behind those dishes, learning the special ingredients and techniques that make them so delicious. Joining me virtually at the Check Please table are SFO private terminal worker, Janet Monahan, nonprofit executive director, Sean Tai and marketing consultant, Jenny Kirk. Let's get things started with the most important meal of the day, breakfast. Janet's go-to spot has been serving up her childhood favorite Swedish pancakes for more than 60 years. Located on the peninsula on El Camino Real, it's the historic Milbrae Pancake House. The Millbury Pancake House has always been a part of our family. In 1959, my uncle and my two aunts bought into the world famous Uncle John's Pancake House. And it was a franchise that was mostly on the West Coast. And we have an old Uncle John's Pancake House menu. We've got Swedish pancakes for 90 cents, a cup of coffee for 10 cents. They renamed the restaurant Millbury Pancake House in 1962. I've learned how to do the cash register. And I have three sisters, and all of us have experienced that, you know, you're working this weekend, you know, somebody called in sick. So we've all kind of been involved in various ways. My father was the kitchen manager here. He started in 1968, and I came to work here in 1987. I'm not really a much of a breakfast eater because uh, I don't like eggs. <laughs> Maybe it's because I crack so many, I don't know. Swedish pancakes is the reason to come here. The Swedish pancakes are a specialty here. It's very popular. People come from all over just to try them. It's a very simple recipe. It's basically, you're taking powdered sugar and eggs and you're whipping it up into a froth and then you add your liquids, and then you add your flour, and the final ingredient was you can't give up the secret. <laughs> There's only a few people that know this recipe. We hide it in a vault, and only two people make this batter here, and it's made daily. So, that's all I can say. <laughs> well, some people like to just let their butter melt on them. Other people roll them. They just chow them down. <laughs> We go through so many years, uh, every once in a while I'll stop and I'll watch people eating and it's incredible how you see their face light up, mmm, you know, what's this, mm. My sisters and I, you know, we talk after work, who'd you see today? Oh, I saw, you know, this customer and this customer and this is what's going on and you are a part of their lives, they're a part of your life and they become family over the years. There's not much we've changed. And my Aunt Marie would come in, sit in a booth, and she'd look around and she'd say, don't change anything. People don't like change. And I understand what she means. You gotta tread lightly. People want what they want, and we're here to keep it that way, you know? Hey, babe. Hooray! 
So Janet, this place has been in business for 60 years. How did you discover it? And why is your dish so special? Oh, Leslie, I've been going there since I was a little girl. It's actually older than I am, which I can't say that about many restaurants. <laughs> It's just fantastic. And you have memories of going with your father, don't you? Always. My dad went almost every day to Mulberry Pancake House no. when he retired. My dad lived till 98, so do the math. Every single day until he was 98 years old. <laughs> you know, one of his nine children or his 18 grandchildren or his great-grandchildren could always find him there every morning. So it was really a family affair to go hang out with grandpa at Mulberry Pancake House. And did he always order the Swedish pancakes? Because that is your must try dish. Yes, they were his favorite thing. I used to have the buttermilk pancakes when I was a child. And then when I started going almost every day with my dad, I said, gosh, you know, what is it about the Swedish pancakes, dad? Come on, I gotta try them. So then I started to order them religiously. Yeah. So usually when the steaming pancakes come to the table, I put the lingonberry butter on and when it starts oozing and dripping all over, I roll it up and eat it like a little sausage. And then I cut the other one with my knife and fork and you know, show my manners. <laughs> well, Sean, when you went, did you eat it with a knife and fork or did you roll it up? Well, when I could finally get entry because it was packed the first time I went and the second time I went, it was only a 10 minute wait. I get in. I've never had these pancakes before. They're very thin. And I just went right at it. I threw that spread on top, put it all over, put some syrup on top, and I ate it with the fork and knife. Mm -hmm. I also used a fork and knife. Uh, <laughs> I agree, it was incredibly delicious. The, the texture and the consistency of the thin crepes, I think was really well done. It can be very difficult to master. And then when you added that sweet and tart butter on top and it just melted in, it really was like a really lovely, warm, comforting breakfast. And I could definitely understand why it's so popular and been such a staple in the area and a place where families and generations would go over and over and over again. But Janet, is there a favorite in addition to the Swedish pancakes? I love everything. There's so many different pancakes. There's the Hawaiian pancake with the coconut and the pineapple. There's the chocolate pancakes. There's apple pancakes. There's every kind of pancake under the sun. But I do love the omelets. The California omelet's my favorite. It has a giant half of avocado on top and crispy bacon chunks and tomato. And it's just lovely. And you can also get the hot chocolate. I know that's a favorite. Yes, the hot chocolate is every kid's favorite because it comes with this much whipped cream on top. Well, we know Janet would go back for this dish and has over many years. Sean, what about you? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm always a uh, a sucker for experience, and this was a great experience. On top of all of that, they have on the house soda water, throw a little lemon in that, and it was perfect. So I loved it, I'm definitely going back. Now, Jenny, would you go back for this dish? You know, I live in the city. I think if I lived on the peninsula, it would definitely be my go-to place for brunch on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so I would highly recommend. All right, well, if you would like to try the Swedish pancakes at Millbrae Pancake House, it's located on El Camino Real in Millbrae. And Janet's pro tip, if you're extra hungry, get a California omelet with the Swedish pancakes on the side. If you haven't tried Korean cowboy gym yet, there's a good chance you've seen someone else eating it on Instagram. The slow cooked beef short ribs topped with melted cheese have become a social media sensation in the Bay Area and beyond. In San Francisco's Japantown, it's Daeho. <laughs> When people try our food for the first time, the expression or the face they make, like whenever I see it, I, I mean, I'm so happy. The name of the dish is Kalbi Jin. Kalbi means shore and then Jin means being braised. We use only high quality meat. We have staff that comes early in the morning to get it prepared. Our special sauce is very traditional. The basic ingredients, soy sauce, garlic, and sugar, means onions in there. And then I can't really tell you what kind of fruit that we use to sweeten the dish. Yes, because we can give all the secrets away. When I was growing up, I only get to have it when it's like my birthday or a special occasion only. 
My mom would take hours, hours to prepare this dish. So in order for us to serve customer faster, we braise it first, and then when we get an order, we start cooking it in a pot, and then before we serve it to the customer, we will put it on a preheated stone pot. That way, when we serve it to the customer, it will be still sizzling and then keep the food warm. One of the reasons why we attract a lot of customers is because of the way we present the dish. Because when you order cheese on top, we'll bring it to your table and then we'll blow torch it right at the table for you. And then a lot of people obviously start filming on their phones and then thankfully they'll put it on their Instagram. And then, yes, it was like boom, you know? I mean, it, it took off. I love presenting Korean cultures to other people. There's a big booming going on right now with the Korean K-pop and then like BTS. I mean, it's not just a having a moment in America only, it's throughout the world. I mean, I just talking about it is giving me a goosebump because the size of uh, South Korea is a fraction of California. People are hyped about our cultures, like music, food. It brings a joy to us whenever we see people enjoying our food. So Jenny, this dish is so spectacular, isn't it? To look at and to eat. Why do you like it so much? Because it's dinner and a show. <laughs> the Calbee Gym is a sweet and savory, or as I call it, sweevery dish. They bring it out table side, piping hot, and then they sprinkle a mound of shredded mozzarella cheese on top and then melt it in front of you before you're about to dive in. So the anticipation just builds and the excitement and your mouth waters, and then you just know in a few seconds, it's gonna be an amazing experience. And they bring a blowtorch and just <laughs> right there in front of you, and I was not expecting that. It was like, what? I couldn't believe it. It was so great. I absolutely loved it. And it was so delicious. Just the whole presentation, we just couldn't get over it. We were all just like, our eyeballs were so big. And those short ribs fall off the bone. Mm. And the purple rice, I put the sauce all over my purple rice and just went to town. And it's really a meal to eat with others. This is not something that you'd order for yourself, right? Absolutely. I think this dish is really great to come with friends and family, share a really big bowl of this really delicious Calbee gym. It's extra perfect on cold nights when Carl the Fog rolls in. All right, Sean. Sean's been waiting to talk about this dish, right, Sean? Uh, well, Leslie, <laughs> Leslie, you know what? Um, there's a few things I love. I love Korean food. I love pizza. I love Japantown have to tell you, I was not a fan of the dish. Oh, no. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, super sweet, like to the point where I don't think I could get through a quarter of it. And, and I was with my partner. And, you know, I wanted to love it. Uh, I looked around and I saw people enjoying it. I don't think it was for me. And I think the biggest thing that I enjoyed was the banchan, the, the three dishes they bring out in the front in the beginning. Okay. One's a kimchi, one's a radish, and the other one is like a green onion that is very fresh. Uh, and also the assortment of rice, they were a fantastic. I recommend ordering it with a side of white rice. That certainly helps cut down that sweetery, like adding those delicious carbs will help cut down with that like overwhelming flavor. And then I also really love rice cakes as well. So you can customize this dish and add a couple different add-ons, but my favorite is the rice cakes, the dolk. All right, now beverages. Who had some good beverages to go with the dishes? I did. Um, I like to enjoy makgeolli with my Calbee Jim. It's a traditional Korean rice wine. I actually have a little right here <laughs> next to me. It's very delicious. Uh, it's effervescent. It's a little milky and yogurty. It does come in a variety of flavors, but this is the original flavor. Um, it also will help cut that sweetness with the dish as well to give you an overall really well-rounded meal experience. Now, what about wait time? Because this is a very popular place, particularly for this dish. Did you have to wait, Janet? Well, we did, but we put our name in on the Yelp app. You can do that from your home, and it said we were three of 23, so we knew to head back and get in there for our time. But there is an iPad right when you walk in. You put yourself on a list, and it's a pretty long list, so 
you want to pack your patience. All right, well, if you would like to try the Calbee Gym at Dayho, the original location is on Post Street in San Francisco, and you can check their Instagram page for additional locations. Now, Jenny's pro tip is to add the rice cakes and to get there early to avoid the wait. Our guest's meaty love affair continues with Sean's favorite takeout staple, a savory lamb and beef shawarma bowl that he says got him through the pandemic. It's made fresh every day in downtown Oakland at Falafel Boy. So Falafel Boy came to me when I was visiting family in Jerusalem and everywhere you go on the street, all you see them is just making falafels fresh right in front of you in the middle of the street with a fryer and it was amazing flavors and I was wondering how about we open one here but not in the street in the restaurant most recipes are traditional but some recipes I add a little kick to it just change the flavor profile that what people like in the Bay Area In uh, Jerusalem, they have shawarmas in every corner. Basically, meat that's spiced a little differently with Mediterranean spices. Everybody spices it differently. My dad used to have a deli and he used to love shawarma. And uh, my mom gave him the recipe and she got it from her mom. So basically, it's grandma's recipe. We got paprika, fresh garlic that we blended up, salt, and our secret spice. A little canola oil. We got pineapple juice, makes it tender, but it kicks off the vinegar flavor, gives it a little more sweet taste. And uh, we got vinegar here to make it tender. We take about 24, 48 hours to marinate, and we use 20% lamb and 80% beef. Our heat source is a lot different. We use lava rocks. We have flames coming out, it's not just an electric burner. It gives it more of a barbecue method cooking. And that's how I think we get the best flavors. It's never overcooked, it's never undercooked. It just comes out very soft, tender, juicy. So on a lamb and beef shawarma bowl, everything's fresh. We use arugula base. We put a little tomatoes, cucumbers, and on the side we put uh, just a little scoop of hummus. And then we put the meat, and then we use uh, tahini sauce. In Jerusalem, they don't use that much hot sauce, but they do have hot sauce. Here in Oakland, people love hot sauce. And the one we have, it's not too spicy, not too mild. We don't even ask if they want hot sauce, we just add it to every single order, because People love it. And if they don't have it, they'll be really upset. Okay, Sean, this dish alone got you through the pandemic. Yeah, Leslie, there's three things that I also love. One is Oakland, the other is biking around Lake Merritt, and the third is like really fresh, really healthy, but tasty food. Yeah. You get this explosion of flavor with the charred edges, how they use those broilers to just perfectly cook the meat. And I think it's that crunch it's the perfect amount of flavoring, and when you bite into it, combined with that veggie, it's an explosion. And there's a hot sauce that you can pour on top, mix in. If you don't need too much, you put a little bit. And I would say that that's my go-to for sure. Right. I really enjoyed it. I went on a Saturday, so I imagine on a weekday, you get the hustle and bustle of downtown, but there was plenty of parking, and it was so quick. I ordered, and you know, within two minutes, I'm sitting outside with my shawarma bowl, and I really enjoyed the flavors. It had rice on the bottom. The arugula was fantastic. Gave it a crunchy, fresh taste to it. I thought it was really, really good. And affordable, right? This is a dish that's affordable. Absolutely. It's, it's under 15 bucks and you get everything in one on the go. All right, Jenny, what about you? Did you enjoy this dish? It wasn't my favorite. Okay. I actually found it to be a little bland if you took out the hummus. And I thought the hummus absolutely was definitely a standout. I could probably eat that just itself on its own. Um, I thought the bulk of the flavor came from the sweet chili sauce, which was good and had a kick and built. But the more you added, it also became very salty. 
So I think it depends on your own personal preference. Um, the heat was great for me. For others, it might be too much. The salt was a little too salty for me. But again, for others, you know, obviously, you know, people are loving it. And it's very easy to get to. It's like a block or two off of BART. And in terms of waiting, what was the wait time for you guys? Was it in and out? Mine was incredibly fast. We walked in, everyone there is incredibly lovely. My friend and I ordered two different shawarma bowls and you know, enjoyed it outside in the Oakland sun. So even though you weren't enamored with this dish, would you go back to Falafel Boy in general for, for hummus and other things? I would for sure go back for that hummus. Right. That texture was incredible. And you don't have to get it as a bowl, but it also comes as a wrap. It does. And the reason why I love the bowl is for those that are carb conscious. They might be on a keto diet, and it's a great kind of alternative to getting that uh, wrap. Okay. If you want to try the shawarma, Falafel Boy is located on Franklin Street in Oakland. Check their website for additional locations. And Sean's pro tip, douse the shawarma with the hot chili sauce for an extra kick. Now we've got even more ideas for Bay Area foods you've just got to try. Producer Cecilia Phillips is on the hunt for off-the-grid dining experiences, and she's having a little fun <laughs> along the way. <laughs> My name is Anna Sudezi. I'm a fishmonger. Um, I'm the daughter of a third-generation fisherman, and my father was a fisherman. I'm continuing his legacy. We probably have about 35 or 36 local fishermen that are exclusively fishing for us. On a daily basis in our fish market, we have a daily selection of 200 plus items, ranging from fresh sashimi grade seafood to live seafood, pot prawns, live Maine lobsters, live crab, live shellfish. I developed a passion for seafood and I just like the quality and just everything under the sea, right? Come on in, a lot of action right now. This is as good as it gets. You know, take a lot of pride in being at that level and, and staying at that level. I mean, who taps each oyster anymore? Nobody. And they should. Make sure they're in good shape. And that's it. This is a this is a New Zealand uh, langoustine. Okay, this is beautiful. It's like a little lobster. So you have some some treats here. What do you have? Well, I always get the smoked salmon, but tonight I'm having a dinner party, so I have the Japanese scallops. So what are you going to do with the Japanese scallops tonight? Miso broiled scallops. I highly recommend it. It's a good recipe. Well, I got uh, some toro salmon, which we'll either cook up tonight or it's sashimi grade, so, so we can have it either way. And I got some uh, ahi poke. What did you come here for? You know, I went here last time and they had really good um, toro. And uh, I also picked up some unagi, octopus leg, and a uh, salmon collar. Tell me about this. These are salmon collars. So part of the jaw of the fish that's really, really tender, typically I do it up just in the oven, some oil, keep it really simple. I do have a blowtorch. I might finish it with that. I might not. <laughs> Where do the recipes come from for the things that you sell here? The chipino, the clam chowder, the crab cakes? The ceviche, I invented that recipe and that style. And the clam chowder, it's one of the ways that my father taught us how to do it. Cheers. How is it? It's good? Very good. She did a good job. This is the base of the chipino, which is a variety of fresh fish cooked and stewed with marinara, garlic, onions, dry sherry wine. All the clams and mussels, we took them out of the shell. So it's almost like a bullet base almost, not too much shell, just a little bit. We put a lot of seafood. See how we layer it? We put so much seafood in there. Here we have a local halibut. Um, this is day boat caught. This is from Bolinas. Day boat, they just go out early in the morning and they come back that same day. So it's basically the freshest fish available. Hook and line, not even 24 hours old. This is one of our main fish that we use for our ceviche. Nice and clear and firm, smells good, it looks good. And we're not gonna let it like cook in the citrus, we just like to dress it. Because the fish is so fresh, it's like sashimi. Everything's there. Heat, a little bit of salt, some sweet texture. The freshness is out of this world. We prepare the pokey, just the fresh fish cubed. Then we put green onions and seeds. We make all the sauces from scratch. Beautiful local wild king salmon. Nice big pieces. I just want you to see the quality of the fish and there's no way to showcase but, but like big pieces. Almost like buttery. That is delicious. We do a big selection of fresh smoked fish too. These are local salmon today, but we smoke a variety of salmon. 
So um, these have been cured with a little bit of salt and brown sugar overnight. And then we put chunks of hickory and apple wood in the pit of the smoker. We make it around 250 to 300 degrees. It's a very quick process. And they smoke for about two hours. Two hours, okay, that's not bad. Uh, so we do about uh, eight to 10 batches a day. And we will smoke probably four to five times a week. Yeah, and they come out beautiful like this. And... Can I see the back of it too? Mm -hmm. Wow. The color is amazing. <gasps> wow. So that's a nice local piece of salmon. Oh, wow. It tastes like this amazing cooked salmon on the inside, but then this amazing texture on the outside. Pure like smoke ring. Right there. And hold oh. The and that's like a good <laughs> two pound size, and they're feeling it's hard, loaded with meat. Oh, it's, is it, it's trying to grab me, huh? Yeah. Look at its face. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks so much, Cecilia, and to my stellar guests on this week's show. We'll see you next time on Check, Please, You've Got to Try This. I'm Leslie Sobrocco. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Um. Which of these dishes would you try? Follow us on Instagram or like us on Facebook and let us know what you think. Check, Please, You Gotta Try This is made possible by the members of KQED and by the following sponsors whom we gratefully acknowledge for their steadfast support during these uncertain times. The Bay Area Airport that's close and reliable. iFlyOAK.com Total Wine & More, offering more than 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and over 4,000 spirits. Total Wine & More, now with nine Bay Area locations. TotalWine.com. It's believing race should never be a health risk, and investing in research to make it so. It's a thousand things, big and small. Sutter Health. Cooking is the first kind of love you know. It was starting when I was a child, with my grandmother doing fresh pasta, and now I transmit it to all the guests. It's something made specially for them. Oceana Cruises, proud sponsor of Check, Please! Bay Area. I gotta hold the fish, otherwise I feel naked. Okay, show us those muscles, girl. <laughs> you like that, like TikTok? So what makes it wasabi? What do you do? Um, still eating? <laughs> yes, we're still eating. <laughs>